Okay, um, we're continuing with uh, the model for describing emotions, handout number five. And uh, I was just starting to say in the last video, what is it that makes stuff so complicated to teach? And it isn't only that there's all the boxes and the flow chart, and some people's brains don't work this way. Uh, plus, there's a lot of information there, lots of different components. Um, you'll see when someone gets to the worksheet for this to do the practice assignment for this, it actually is easier than you might think because it walks you through filling out every one of these boxes for one of your own emotions. And so it comes more to life and it feels more user-friendly. But teaching it, you have to make it user-friendly. The other thing that makes this difficult is that all of these things that happen on this page happen in an instant. This is like an instantaneous response system, but explaining it with this is very cognitive and takes one step at a time and takes a while. It's just so different than the real experience. So one thing I've done uh, when I teach this sometimes that I think helps um, keep people's interest and help people see how it works is I like to generate an emotion in the group um, in real time and then stop and say, okay, let's map it out on this, even before I show them the sheet, because the sheet is so daunting. So I'll tell you the most common one I've done, though I've done other ones, but I think the one that's been most effective is when I say to the group, hey, everybody, I just want to tell you, uh, there's a lot to teach today, and therefore, instead of going our usual amount of time, stopping at 5 o'clock or whatever, we're going to go one extra hour today and stop at 6 o'clock or whatever that turns out to be. Right? And then I just sit there as if that's completely true, even though it's a gimmick. And, uh, and then everybody has about five seconds to digest what I've said. And then I say, okay, that's it. That's the end of that, uh, that exercise. And then they realize, oh, that was an exercise. And then I say, okay, I'm sorry if you felt betrayed, but uh, here's what I want to know. Um, did anybody have an emotion after I said what I said? Uh, and uh, uh, someone might say, yeah, I was angry. That isn't fair. Uh, someone else might say, uh, yeah, I felt, uh, you know, <laughs> my glasses are screwed up, sorry. Um, my, uh, someone else might say, um, I felt uh, uh, resentful. Someone else might say, I felt um, a sense of shame because I really don't want to be here that long, and I thought I should. Uh, someone else might say, uh, I felt uh, uh, fear or anxiety because I don't know what I'm going to do. I had a plan about what to do after this. And someone else uh, might surprise you and say, I felt uh, joy because I thought, oh, good, we get to be together longer. Um, that's not the usual. <laughs> okay, so um, after uh, you get those different ones, it's interesting, and I say, by the way, let's stop for a minute. Let me go back to those of you who are angry or anxious or whatever, and then ask you, what was your interpretation of what I said? You know, how did you read it? You know, what got you from my, what I said to your emotion, and sometimes you then get the interpretation, well, the one that was afraid uh, had a plan, uh, the one who was angry just thinks it's unfair, so you get different interpretations uh, lead to these. So now you've got a live emotion in the room, and then I'll bring this out and say, here's the model for emotions in DBT. Let's go through the one that we just did, and uh, let, let's see how it works. And then I'll go through, you know, that first you might have had some vulnerability factors. And I might be writing it up on the board like this, but building it one step at a time. Uh, so uh, there were the vulnerability factors. Then there's the prompting event. And you have to say, like, well, what was the prompting event? Well, maybe it was when I said that we we're staying for an extra hour. Or maybe the prompting event was the way I said it for some people. Like I said it in a very... Mm, as if there's no flexibility. 
uh, or something like that. And then you're aware of it, and then it's sort of like, what was the interpretation? And you could say with different emotions that people had, there were different interpretations that could fill out the interpretation box. And then you get into this big box, and the left half of it is the box of emotional experiencing. Uh, and the right half of it is emotional expressions. Um, and the experiencing box includes changes in the brain uh, that we really don't have direct access to usually, uh, changes in the nervous system uh, that affect uh, muscles and uh, heartbeat and breathing and autonomic nervous system. And we do sometimes have access to those things or awareness of those. Then there's the actual body sensations, the feelings. What was the feeling? How did we subjectively experience that uh, experience? And then there's the action urges that go with it. And so as I go through this, I might say, okay, so those of you who had anger, what, did you have any action urges? Yeah, I was going to yell at you, or I was going to walk out, or something. But I, I wasn't going to, but that's the urge I had. Well, those of you who felt anxious, did you have any action urges? Yeah, I just thought, uh, uh-oh, uh, I don't know what to do, or I, 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 I thought of, I, I better explain something to you. I, better, I started to build an explanation. So you get urges uh, for different ones, and that, that's the experience box. Then you go over to the expression box. What was the body language, the facial expressions? The words, if you did act on an emotion with words, the actual actions and how each of these and the point as you're making a lot, the point you make as you're going along this is that um, is that every one of these components is interrelated to the others. And if you were to change any one of them in an emotional response, it would necessarily eventually either that time or the next time, change the others. So this becomes your kind of roadmap for different things you can change in order to change or modify an emotion in the future. You can change your emotion by changing your interpretation, by changing the prompting event, by changing your awareness or um, sensitivity to, your attention to the prompting event. Uh, if you could change your brain, if you could change your nervous system or your circulatory system, if you changed uh, your action urge, uh, if you changed your body sensations, you know, if you changed your facial expressions, you might change the whole thing. If you change what words you use, you change the whole thing. It's systemic. It's all interrelated. And then you get to where there's an emotion name uh, at this side. And, uh, and, and, uh, so you, you get an emotion name, which actually is important because that shapes further how you experience it based on your history with that emotion. Um, and you become aware of that. And then next thing you know, there are after effects to each emotion. And, uh, and then sometimes secondary emotions. Uh, you got, might go from feeling uh, angry to thinking, oh my God, no, I can't be angry. I'm not supposed to be angry. I was taught not to be angry. Or I don't want to be angry at Charlie. I don't want to think that he actually was such a jerk. So actually, I'm kind of feeling uh, guilty that I felt angry. So now you experience guilt instead of anger. So it can be a little confusing. And so um, uh, secondary emotions uh, are things like guilt following anger or a shame following anger, or uh, anger following shame, if you're uncomfortable with shame. So um, you end up with a secondary emotion, and you might end up having now another prompting event happen. Uh, that actual emotion might be another prompting event, uh, or it might lead to another prompting event to happen. And next thing you know, you're, you're into the whole cycle again, and you get an emotion on top of an emotion, okay? This is the model, and you want people to learn this. You're going to refer back to it. There's a nice homework assignment where you pick an emotion that you had during the week, and you map it out with this. And uh, the worksheet helps you because it has boxes labeled and empty boxes, so you fill it out. Okay, enough on that. Read more in the manual about ways to teach this, but I suggest you find a way to teach it other than just 
pull out this model and walk it through because you will lose your customers. Um, the next handout is related to this handout. So it's handout number six, and it goes many, 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 many pages. And it's the handout of ways to describe emotions. Another important handout, but let me explain to you, you don't teach this whole handout. It would take you a whole month to teach this handout because look how it works. You have words for anger. So there's, there's pages for each emotion. There's, there's the anger page. There's the disgust page. There's the fear page. You've got a shame page. You've got an envy page. You've got a greed page. You've got a jealousy page. So, you know, and what does each page give you? It gives you a kind of a vocabulary of possibilities for each of those boxes in the model. So you have way, anger words, which gives you a lot of synonyms. So if you're not good at labeling your own emotions, this gives you a chance to, uh, to say, oh, yeah, well, I identify with that word, even though I don't with the other ones. And that may be in your lexicon from your uh, development. Okay, uh, of how you describe anger, or, or there may be different shades of anger. So there's that. Then you have a, a list of possible prompting events that typically will cause the emotion of anger. Then you have typical interpretations of prompting events, typical biological changes and experiences of anger for that box of emotional experiencing. Then you have typical expressions and actions of anger, and then after effects of anger. And every emotion is covered this way. So it gives a vocabulary or a dictionary for each emotion. Uh, when, when people are doing the homework assignment and they're trying to fill in those boxes and they're not sure about certain things, um, they can fill it in by, they can go back to these pages, they consider them reference materials, to find your emotion and find the various components of your emotion. Um, you know, let's say somebody is experiencing anger in the experiencing box, but they don't know how they got there. It seemed like out of the blue. But maybe by identifying prompt, typical prompting events for anger and typical interpretations of prompting events that might lead to anger, maybe they can locate their prompting event and their interpretation. Um, and you can find things that are missing in somebody's emotional response. Let's say they grew up in a family where anger was really prohibited. And so you might get certain aspects of this model that are activated with a given person from that history, right? Maybe you see some of the uh, nonverbal expressions of anger, but you never hear a verbal expression, and the person says they don't think that it's anger. Um, and then you might start asking, well, I wonder in the emotional experiencing box, I wonder in the prompting event box, I wonder in the interpretation box. This becomes something you can play with as much as you want, but don't just teach handout number six. I would suggest that you pick one page that's related to an emotion that seems to have come up or been discussed in somebody's examples so far in the class. Uh, and use that in order to walk through and just let's look at the various possibilities for filling in each box. Okay, done with that. Now, you're done with the uh, sort of beginning and the, the first goal of this module. Now you're on to the goal of, of changing emotional responses, changing emotional responses. This assumes now you're, you're caught in an emotion or an emotion is caught in you. And now what are you going to do? So uh, tune in on the next video. Bye-bye.